So we're talking about increasing in every area of our lives. And last week, we established that God is the God of increase. Somebody say with me, God is the God of increase. So anytime we talk about increase, God is at the center of it, or Jesus is at the center of it. We don't just increase by ourselves, by our own will, but we increase by his strength and by his power. And today I'm talking about increasing spiritually. Increasing spiritually. If we want to increase in any area of our lives, the first place we start is in our spiritual life. And last week when I spoke about uh, God of increase, we um, looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and we listened to the Apostle Paul talk about he planting, Apollos watered, and he said God gave the increase. Now today what I'm going to do is to take us a little earlier before he made that statement. So we're still in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And uh, we will look at verses 1 to 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. Now, uh, Paul is speaking to the church in Corinth. And listen to what he says. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now, you were not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able. For you are still carnal. For where there are envy and strife and divisions among you, are you not carnal and becoming like mere men? I like that last part. Are you not carnal and becoming like mere men? People, that, that phrase mere people means just like everybody else, like unbelievers. So Paul is writing to the church in Corinth. Uh, the church in Corinth was a, was a church of different shades. They were uh, very enthusiastic and zealous when it came to spiritual things. Uh, they, they spoke in tongues. Uh, they, they liked to operate in their so-called spiritual gifts. Um, but Apart from that, everything was wrong with the church in Corinth. So Paul is writing to them, and he says when he was with them, when he was with the church, and Paul had stayed in the church in Corinth for 18 months. When he planted the church, he stayed in Corinth for 18 months, teaching them, exhorting them, encouraging them on the foundational doctrines of Christ. Now Paul says when he was with them, he couldn't teach them many deep things because They were carnal people and they were babies in Christ. So, Paul gives us a clue as to who a carnal Christian is. So, who is a carnal Christian? There are two things he says about a carnal Christian. He says, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal. So, the carnal Christian cannot receive spiritual things. A carnal Christian cannot receive spiritual things. Now, Paul does not say that the Corinthians are not spiritual. That's not what he's saying. But he's saying that he could not speak to them as spiritual. Because this is the kind of church where uh, people spoke in tongues uh, very, very enthusiastically. When uh, they went to church, uh, people would speak in tongues for the whole service. Sometimes even the preacher would preach in tongues. And, and, and people, uh, somebody is supposed to lead in prayer as we do here. Like uh, we say, uh, Pastor uh, Patrick was the one who led intercession. We say, Pastor Patrick, come and lead in prayer. In the church in Corinth, he would start speaking in tongues and we wouldn't even know the prayer topic. So these people were uh, very enthusiastic when it came to spiritual things. But Paul says, in spite of all that show of spirituality, he couldn't speak to them as spiritual people. And that's very important that sometimes we can appear spiritual and not be spiritual. Sometimes we can exhibit some things that seem to imply that we are spiritual people, but in reality we are not. And Paul 
is saying that he couldn't speak to them as spiritual people. They couldn't receive spiritual things. The second thing uh, is that he says that uh, in verse 2, I fed you with milk and not with solid food. So carnal people cannot receive the solid word of God. They can't receive the solid word of God. They can only receive milk. What's the difference between milk and solid food? Milk is for babies. Solid food is for mature Christians. So Paul is saying, when I started teaching in Corinth, I was just giving you milk. I couldn't give you much. I couldn't give you solid food because you're not able to receive it. I wonder what Paul will say about the church in Ghana uh, if uh, he came to examine us, whether he'll call us spiritual or he'll also call us carnal people who cannot receive spiritual things or the solid word of God. So for us to increase spiritually or for us to increase this year, our spiritual life must be something we pay attention to. So let's look at the marks of carnality, the marks of carnality. And, and in verse 4 of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul says, For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? So, in the church in Corinth, there are people who say, as for me, I belong to Paul. And others who say, I belong to, to Apollos. And he says, isn't that carnal? Then you go to chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. He expands on this notion. And what he says is so important. 1 Corinthians 1, 12 and 13. He says, now I say this, that each of you say, I am of Paul. Or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, that's Peter, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? So what is it about this church in Corinth and what are they doing wrong that Paul calls them carnal Christians or baby Christians who cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. And he tells us what they are doing wrong. He says that uh, some say, I'm, I'm, I belong to Paul, uh, I belong to Peter, I belong to Apollos, I belong to Christ. So what are they doing wrong? Two things they are doing wrong. First, they are making the servants of Christ equal to Christ. So, in the same breath, they are saying, I belong to Paul, I belong to Christ, I belong to Peter. So, for them, belonging to Christ and to Peter and to Paul is about the same thing. They are making the servants of Christ equal to Christ. They saw Christ the same way as they saw their pastors. That's what they were doing. They saw Christ on the same level with their pastors. They never saw belonging to Christ as more important than belonging to a so-called man or woman of God. So, in the church in Corinth, the man of God was equal to God. The preacher is equal to Christ. And they mention the name of Christ and the name of their preachers in the same sentence. And he says, that's carnality. That's amazing. And sometimes you get a feeling that we are in Corinth, in Ghana. In Nigeria, in South Africa, the church in Africa is like the church of Corinth, where Christ is reduced to the level of the minister. And not only did they put themselves, the, the preachers, on the same level as Christ, they were actually replacing Christ with the servants of Christ. They were replacing 
So Paul says, ask them the rhetorical question. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? Instead of placing their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, they place their faith in the men of God. In Paul, in Apollos, in Peter. They believe in these people more than they believed in Christ. And Paul says, listen, was I the one who died for you? Was I crucified for you? Why do you want to place your faith in me when I didn't make any sacrifice for you on the cross? And we see some of that in the church today. When preachers undermine the scriptures and say things to shift people from the written word to the word they are preaching. So people would say, for example, put the Bible aside and listen to me. Put the Bible aside? Or they will call the Bible or properly exposing the scriptures, proper interpretation, proper exegesis of the scripture as the letter. We want the spirit. We don't want the word. That's Corinth. And Paul says that's not spiritual. That is actually carnality. And sometimes you see preachers exalting their own word against the scripture. And they'll say things like, this is not in the Bible, but I'm telling you, by whatever anointing is upon them. If it's not in the Bible, then it is not valid for the Christian. So the problem with the church in Corinth is they had this outward appearance of spirituality, but the foundation is all wrong. And these days I see a lot of that. And you better watch out for that. Because if we're going to increase, the one who gives us the increase is God. And we cannot increase in God when we are undermining his word. People pray sometimes in the name of the man of God or the woman of God. They will say, they will call the name of God by their man of God, Otabel Nyami, or so and so's Nyami. Otabel's God. And so we make the man of God and his so-called relationship with God the most important thing. They'll say, well, but in the Bible there is the God of Isaac and the God of Abraham and the God of Jacob and the God of Elijah because they don't understand the difference between the New Testament and the Old Testament where God was known by a few and in the New Testament as many as are led by the Spirit of God they are the sons of God. That is why Paul calls them brethren. Doesn't even call them sons and daughters. Says you are my brothers and sisters in Christ. Your God is my God. And our God is the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. One God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is a lot of pseudo spirituality. So called spirituality. But that has no foundation. And that was a problem with the church in Corinth. Because sometimes people want to make carnality seem spiritual. And the saddest thing I've seen sometimes is pastors perpetuating that. A pastor is 
praying and he says, I pray under the mantle of, and then they mention a man of God's name. I operate under the grace of Mesa Otabem. Under my grace? Are you crazy? You operate under my grace? Who taught us this nonsense? That pastors operate under the grace of their senior pastor or bishop or whoever. No, we operate under the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. We all stand by his grace. You don't pray in my name. You know, last two years when we, were, we started telecasting the prayer for greater work, uh, for uh, 40 days of power, I was monitoring the prayer. And I had a couple of people, then we come to you, Father, by the mantle of Dr. Otabla. I said, are you crazy? Stop that nonsense. This is what they were doing in Corinth. I'm for Paul. I'm for Apollos. I'm for Cephas. I'm for Christ. They put Christ on the same level. And the man of God was their God. And Paul said, shut down. This because listen, it's not even spiritual. You are babies. Because if you are truly spiritual, you would know who your father is. And your father is not a man of God. Your father is God Almighty. Jesus says when you pray, say, our father who art in heaven. I understand spiritual fatherhood, but I think we are stretching it to bizarre levels. Where even pastors cannot pray, lead prayer, without referring to their senior pastor. And people want to assume that is spirituality. That, according to 1 Corinthians, is carnality. And if you do that, you cannot receive from the Spirit of God. Verse 14, chapter 2, 1 Corinthians. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually designed. The carnal Christian cannot receive from the Holy Spirit. The carnal Christian cannot receive from the Holy Spirit. If you want to receive something this year, you have to receive it from the Holy Spirit. You can't receive it from me. I can talk to you about your Father and your God, and I can explain His Word to you, but your faith must always be with God. You cannot receive from God if you don't even know whom you are worshiping. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 and 10. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. The carnal Christian cannot hear, see, nor discern God's purposes. Eye has not seen, ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man. When we behave like mere men, we cannot receive from God. We can't receive from God. And not only can they not hear, see, or discern God's purpose, they can't receive what God has freely given to them. There are things that God has freely given to us by his Holy Spirit. And they don't come from me, they come from God himself. His grace is sufficient for you. I have no grace that is your sufficiency. If you want to tap in my, into my grace, you are a miserable person living a miserable life. Because you know, people go around, Pastor, I tap into your grace. Tap into my grace. 
Where, where, how did we get to this level? Where Christ has been marginalized and the man of God is at the center. And there are preachers who love to have it so. And that is why we're creating so many baby Christians who cannot stand any adversity. When their faith is tried, they either go to an occult or to a psychic. They cannot trust God because their faith is in a man of God. But when we place the faith of the people in God, then in the midnight hour of their life, when the pastor is not there, God is there and they know how to trust him and they know how to depend on his word and they know how to depend on his promises. That is spirituality. Yes. <laughs> so how do we increase spiritually? And, and I'm bringing my message to a close. How do we increase spiritually? Well, because the, we're having a problem with the nursing mothers, they have joined us with their wonderful babies who are joining uh, and contributing to my message. <laughs> All right. So, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13 to 14. Hebrews 5, 13 to 14. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he's a babe. Not babes like my babes. He's a babe, babe. Babe like those tiny ones over there. Verse 14, but solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So how do we grow spiritually? How do we increase spiritually? Three things. One, godly appetite. Godly appetite. Having an intense desire for the things of God. This is where our spiritual growth starts from. An intense desire for the spirit things of God. Jesus noted that in the Sermon of the Mount, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. Having a hunger for God that I may know him. Lord, I want to know you. Lord, I want to understand your word. Lord, I want to serve you. When your heart pants as the deer pants after the waters, your heart pants for the Lord. When your heart desires God, for when from the depths of your being, you want to be all that God wants you to be. That's where it starts from. There has to be a deep appetite, a strong appetite for God. That's where it starts. Secondly, godly wisdom, having a deep understanding of God's word. Not shallow understanding of God's word, not just knowing the Bible and some Bible stories and some ideas you heard from a preacher, because for most of us Christians, everything we know is what we were told. We haven't discovered anything for ourselves from the scriptures. But if we want to grow, we have to discover truth from the scriptures. And every Christian must invest in their spiritual growth. You must have more than one Bible. Baby Christians have one Bible. I'm, a joke. I'm joking. But I'm serious too. Is a joking serious. Baby Christians have one Bible. You have to have many Bibles. Probably three, at least. Uh, if I use the King James as my main Bible, but I have so many Bibles. Of course, I'm a pastor. I must invest in that. But if you are not a pastor, at least... Uh, get another version, maybe the new uh, NIV, or get other versions, so that when you read the Bible, you can read it in three translations to get a better sense of what you are reading. Get a good Bible concordance. Get a Greek concordance and get a Hebrew concordance because you have to mine the scriptures yourself. 
You have to mine it. You know, when, when somebody is a carpenter, even if they work for a carpentry company, they have their own tools as well. They have their saw, the plane, a hammer, just for emergencies. If somebody is an electrician, apart from the fact that he works in a company, company provides him with tools, they have their own screwdriver and they have a couple of things. If somebody is a musician, they have their own instrument. So when you are a Christian, apart from coming to church to be taught, you must have the tools of your faith. You must have it. So when you are having your Bible study, you can at least do some basic Greek study and basic Hebrew study. Not as deeply as I would do because that's my full-time job. But you must do something yourself. To mine the scriptures. Because if we want to grow spiritually and receive spiritual things, there is no lazy way to do it but to go into the scriptures. We must desire it. So, godly wisdom. And finally, godly discernment. Having a keen awareness of God's will. Able to discern between what is right and what is wrong. Knowing the will of God for us at every time. Many Christians are not able to tell the difference between a person who operates by the Spirit of God and a person who operates by an evil spirit. I'm amazed at how many Christians allow people to break up their marriages and destroy their relationship with their parents because somebody said your husband was a wizard or your wife was a witch or your mother wants to eat you up. And a Christian has no way of discerning the spirit that is speaking. For us, everything supernatural is of God. No, sir. There are a lot of psychic spirits. Psychics. No spirit of God. Giving deadly information to people. Just... A couple of days ago, I heard about a pastor whose marriage was almost collapsing. And then I got to understand why his marriage was collapsing. That's some young boy, so-called prophet. Young boy, so-called prophet. Who doesn't even know the scriptures. Told him, pastor, that his wife is a witch. And the sad thing is this so-called prophet, when he was confronted with what he had said, went to apologize that he didn't know what he was doing. When you're a spiritual baby, people will play you like football, like chaskele, they will play you. Because you have no ability to discern what spirit is speaking to you. When Paul was in Philippi, somebody was following him saying, here are those who preach to us the word of truth. All intents and purposes, that is a good spirit. Paul discerned, although it is saying the right things, the spirit behind it is wrong. And Paul rebuked that spirit. Just because somebody told you the serial number of the money you are holding or the car registration number you have does not mean it's from the Spirit of God. And they're messing up your lives. And some of you are on the verge of divorce because a psychic lied to you. And you know why you believe? Because you don't know how to discern the will of God. And why don't you know how to discern the will of God? Because the word of God does not dwell in you richly. And until we get to that point, our whole Christian life will be manipulated. And that's what Paul is telling them. He says to the church in Corinth, I couldn't tell you anything because you are babes. Why are you babes? Because you say I'm for this and I'm for that. You don't even know 
levels of spirituality. You don't know that Jesus Christ is at a level totally unapproachable by Paul. And some of you think a so-called man of God, his word is equal with Jesus. You know, sometimes you people say something, I say, you say, but, but the scripture doesn't say so. They say, put the scripture aside. And I hope none of you is in that nice Sunday morning church people. I hope you are not like that. You're going to dig the word. You're going to mine the scriptures. Because you're going to be responsible for your spiritual increase and spiritual growth. It is when you have increased spiritually that you can discern the things of God. So God will speak to you about your destiny. God is not in the business of telling people about you when he has access to you. If God is going to tell people about you, he would already have told you about them because you are his child. And any father who cannot speak to his own children and goes to the neighborhood to tell people about his children is not a good one. If your father did that, you would say he's not a good father. And why do you think your heavenly father? You sit in front of him to read his word, to pray and listen to him, and he doesn't talk to you and goes somewhere to tell people about you. This year, get to know your father. Get to know your father. Get to know his voice. Get to understand him. And allow him to pour himself into you. That is how we increase spiritually. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, before I sit down, I just want to give us the chance to make a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're here this morning and uh, you say, Pastor, I want to grow spiritual. I want to be a spiritual person. The beginning point of spirituality is to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Sometimes we call it being born again or being saved or receiving Christ or repenting of your sins. Whatever term we use, it means one thing. It means that Jesus Christ comes to live in your heart. And it doesn't happen automatically. We have to make it happen. We have to invite him to come into our life. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you are here this morning, you say, Pastor, I want Jesus to come into my heart. I want Jesus to come into my life. If that's your desire, just lift up your right hand wherever you are. Lift up your right hand. You say, I want Jesus to come into my heart. I see some hands up. God bless you. Just lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. I'll just take note of everybody with their hands up in your lane. Lift your hand up. And those of you who have lifted up your hand, I just want you to rise up, stand up wherever you are. Just stand up wherever you are. Stand up and put your hand upon your heart. Stand up and put your hand upon your heart. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And I'm going to lead you in prayer. And all of us are going to pray with you as you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. I'll just, I'm praying with them, so please, this is not a time for giving out forms. Just stand and receive. Just put your hand upon your heart and pray and say with me, Heavenly Father, I come to you today just as I am. I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. But I thank you that Jesus died for me and rose again from the dead to give me life. And today, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. I thank you, Father, for accepting me as your child. I declare today, I am a child of God. I belong to Jesus. I am born again. 
And I thank you, Father, for new life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Listen to me carefully. Those of you who are standing, the ushers will give you a form. Please take time to fill it. We'll get back and, and be in touch with you to help you to live the Christian life. And uh, just make a commitment that this year you're going to know the Lord and you're going to live for him. Amen.